Hello, hello, and happy Friday. I hope you had a great week and learned a lot and that you're ready for the final session of the Google Ads Fundamentals Bootcamp, which today is all about ads. We're going to learn how you can promote your iOS and your Android apps with Google Ads. Any questions you have, as always, just pop them in the chat. Let's get started. If this is the first time you're joining us this week and we haven't met before, a very special welcome to you. My name is Christina and I'm a Google Ads and Digital Marketing Trainer. I've worked in the Google Ads universe for over 10 years at all sides of the table, as an account strategist at Google, in different in-house roles, and for the last five years as a consultant running my own and running my own little agency. So my day-to-day -day working life probably doesn't look very different from yours, working with clients and running campaigns. But today I am your trainer. So let's get started. In today's session, I will be sharing with you some insights on the latest developments in the app world. We will explore how we can define the business value of an app and how web and app fit together in your marketing strategy. And lastly, there'll be some hands-on tips for implementing and optimizing app campaigns. So why apps? Today, as consumers, we have more options than ever before when we want to get a product. We can go to a shop and buy it there the traditional way. We can order it from a website and have it delivered to our house, or we can use click and collect and um, pick up the product from a near location near us. We can call somebody and to order a product, or we can interact with a chatbot, or we can use an app. And because we have so many options, our shopping paths have become more and more complex. That's a phenomenon we've heard about a lot this week already. And apps play an increasingly bigger role in it. Here's an example of a um, customer journey that involves an app. And while it's certainly not me in the picture, I've actually been through a similar process recently. So let me tell you about it. Um, I bought myself a new pair of running leggings and I have a few brands where I regularly go to the stores and that I usually buy from. So of course um, I'm on the email list because when I buy in the store, they also um, email me my receipt so that I have it in a safe place. And then they also can send me their newsletters, but I'm also generally interested in the newsletters because they have sales. It's my birthday, I get a voucher happy days. So um, I received an email from a brand when they had a sale on and I happened to need a new pair of leggings. Um, I went to the website to check out what all was on offer, found a few things I liked and put them into my shopping cart. I then got a notification saying, hey, if you use the app, we're actually giving you an extra 10% off your purchase. So of course I went and downloaded the app to get the extra discount. I continued shopping in the app until I got distracted um, by my husband who couldn't find his shoes at the time. So I came to the rescue and helped him, but had forgotten about my shopping activities until I got a push notification from the app that reminded me to check out. Um, and I finished my purchase in the app and got my new leggings. Let's have a look at app users and in particular retail app users to understand why the brand in my example was so keen on getting me to install the app. Not only do app users buy more often, up to 33% more times, they also buy more items and even more expensive items. So app users are very, very valuable, maybe even the most valuable users for a retailer. Mobile usage growth has been strong in the past and COVID-19 has accelerated this even more. Now 91% of users use mobile devices to go online and we've seen a 70% increase in Q1 of 2020. And from March to November 2020, in the US alone, 10 billion apps have been downloaded. That's 9% more than in the nine months before. And it comes to an average of five apps per person per month. Have a think. How has your device and app usage changed over the last one and a half years? Apps have transformed the way we interact with the world, which is why users continue to use app experiences now that the stores have reopened. And why is that? What makes consumers choose a brand? The number one reason is convenience, followed by price and selection in the third place. Take Amazon as an example, who have perfected all of these with prime delivery, easy returns, and no questions asked refunds, a fast app, and so much more. You have to make sure your users have a great experience because they expect nothing less. They want to find information fast, they want to act quickly, and they want a personalized experience. The demands on apps are high, but so is their business value. Let's have a look at how Google can help you promote your apps. Promoting your app is important and can have three goals. Firstly, you need to get discovered. 
60% of the apps in the app stores actually never get downloaded. That number blows my mind and also makes me feel really bad for the people who developed them in the first place. So you don't want to be one of those. Secondly, once your app has been downloaded, you need to stay relevant. An average user has over 100 apps on their phone and actively uses only 25% of them, only five at a high frequency. Of course, you want your app to get used. And lastly, you want to re-engage re your users. Data shows that apps who do re-engage your users have higher retention rates and also higher shares of paying users. Google Ads has a special campaign type to promote ads. They're called Universal App Campaigns or UACs because we love an acronym. And with UACs, you can easily promote your apps to over 1 billion users across all of Google's platforms in a single campaign. And UACs are fully automated. You only set up your campaign goal, your location and language targeting, and your budget. The campaign then uses automation to find the right users and tailor your message. And the campaign also automatically tests different creative assets and channel combinations to serve the best ads to each user on each platform. Let's have a look at universal app campaign creation and best practices. There are four main steps to launch your universal app campaign. Step one is implementing conversion tracking. Step two is defining your goal. Step three is developing and implementing the right creative. And step four is implementing deep linking. Let's have a look at each of these in more detail. For conversion tracking, you have four options. You can use Google Analytics for Firebase or a third-party app analytics tool. You can use app conversion tracking and the remarketing API. Or for your Android app, you can also track conversions with Google Play. The next step is defining your goal because that determines the bidding options that you should select. There are three options. You can optimize for app installs. You also have the option to choose app install advanced and you can optimize for actions. Let's have a look at each of them. If your goal are simply app installs, you can select this as your goal and you will get installs at an efficient cost per install. This is the best option if you want distribution and reach for your app. For example, if you are a gaming app who is just launching a new game. If you want users to take a near-term action after downloading your app, choose the app option app campaigns with install advanced. You will still use cost per impression bidding, but the system will generate downloads from users more likely to take an in-app action, like booking your first ride on a ride-hailing app. For these two campaign types, your daily budget should be 50 times the target cost per install that you want to have in your campaigns to give the campaign enough data for optimization and campaign stability. If you want to maximize in-app actions at a target CPA, then the third option is the right one. An example for action campaigns is a campaign for a travel app, which wants to generate flight or hotel bookings. Action campaigns should have a daily budget of 10 times the target CPA. I am now going to take you through the setup of a universal app campaign in my demo account to show you how simple it is. Here we are in our Google Ads demo account to create a universal app campaign together. So as always, when we want to create a new campaign from scratch, we click new campaign and choose our campaign objective. As we were looking to promote an app, that is the objective we choose. And then we can select a campaign type, which in this case is app campaign. And that's also the only option that we have. And then we can select a campaign subtype, which we have can choose out of three options. We can do app installs, or we can do app engagement if we want um, to get existing users to take actions, like just to re-engage them and stay relevant, as we discussed earlier. And if we are promoting an Android app, we can also use app pre-registration, which gets users to register before the app is actually launched. We're doing app installs today, so that's what we're selecting. In the next step, we select our actual app. So today in this demo, we are using um, the, the Google Ads app. And here you can look it up either by searching for it or if you have the app ID, you can use that. And because I've already um, created a campaign earlier, this account already recognizes it. So in that case, I can just accept the proposal that I'm being given here. Because this is a demo, we need to rely on our imagination a little bit as well. Um, so we have to imagine that we already have conversion tracking set up that tracks downloads, but that also potentially tracks even um, some in-app actions and pushes this into the account, as we discussed earlier, but that's not a step um, that we could complete for this demo. So we need to um, imagine that we did. So let's imagine that this field is not here. 
and uh, click continue. Then we uh, give our campaign a name as always. And I'm calling it UAC for Universal App Campaign. I am now, I only, will only be targeting the UK. I will call this demo. Um, Changing my location. The best practice for your uh, for universal app campaigns is to target as make the make the targeting as wide as um, as wide as possible. So what advertisers typically do is they group all um, geographic areas that have a similar return on estimate on investment and kind of like a similar socio demographic structure together. So the app costs the same. Um, they make kind of like the same amount of money per user, and then they usually group campaigns into like different. Yeah, location badges. So we have the UK selected. We don't necessarily need to select a language in this case. Get the warning that it shares the same location and language as my other, uh, as my other campaign. So let's also use our imagination um, uh, and pretend that this is not happening. But it is a very good warning that the system is giving me because it doesn't make sense to run two campaigns with the exact targeting. Um, we should really be pooling the data in in one campaign. And then we set our average daily budget. Before the average daily budget should be 50 times the target cost per install. So I'm calculating with the target cost per install of five uh, euros here. So we'll set it to 250. And then in the bidding section, we can set the campaign focus, whether we want install volume or in-app actions. In this case, we're making an install volume campaign conveniently because also we don't have any conversions for in-app action set up. Um, then we can either target all types of use, all kinds of users, or if we had conversion tracking set up, we could also say users li are likely to perform an in-app action. So we could give the system like one more, one more data point to work with that we actually want to optimize for. And that would be like the app install advanced, um, advanced campaign. But yeah, we don't have that now, unfortunately. So we'll just go with the install volume and um, targeting all all kinds of users. Our target cost per install is five euros. And then we're getting and being informed that the system will use a target CPA bid strategy to um, make this happen. If we don't have a target cost per install in mind, we could also just leave that empty. We have our start and end dates here set here and then we can go into the advanced settings section where we have the option to attach a data feed um, that helps both with targeting and also um, yeah just gives more more creative assets and more imagery to our ads i'll talk to you about that in a bit um, and you can we can either attach like a dynamic ad feed or a google merchant center feed if we if we have a product-based business but because we don't have that, we just hide this again and then click save and continue and go into the um, creative setup. So we're choosing our ad group name, which in this case is going to be an evergreen one. And we can enter some of the assets we have. And here again, we need to rely on our creativity and imagination a little bit um, because I haven't prepared um, many of the assets that we should typically be using. So we can add up to five headlines. We need at least two, but as you'll hear later, it is very important that you add as many assets as possible um, because that gives your campaign the best chances of success. But we'll do three headlines for now. Um, manage ads on the go, the Google ads app and Google ads at your fingertips. And then we have some descriptions as well. Manage search GDN and YouTube campaigns with the Google Ads app and keeping tabs on your campaigns has never been easier. Download the Google Ads app today. Let's imagine that we have many more. Let's also imagine that we're now uploading lots of images here and saving them and adding them. And we can also imagine that we're uploading um, some videos here or found it, finding them off YouTube and adding them to the campaign so that our campaign has a lot of assets to work with and to yeah, make the best ads 
for our users. We can then also here see what the ads will look like on the different platforms, which if you're an agency working with clients, it's always a good idea um, to share, share some previews. And uh, that already is it, actually. We are clicking Save and Continue. We're seeing um, a little confirmation and a summary of all the settings we've made. And we continue to campaign and we're done. See, that was easy. And we are now about halfway through our session. Let's pick up the third element in the universal app campaign setup. We've already talked about conversion tracking and defining business goals and choosing bid strategies. The next part is creative. Creative are the biggest lever we have for optimization because most other parts of the campaign are automated, but also because creative is how we are connecting with the user. Let's look how ads are created and how we can optimize them. The app campaign creates your ads for you. You just feed the campaign with text, image and video assets and the algorithm creates great ads for you and then places them on the different Google properties, on the Play Store, on Google Search, on YouTube, on the Chrome homepage and on the Google Display Network. Your assets should of course be of the highest quality. You want high resolution imagery with no or minimal text and distractions because the text is a separate asset in your campaign and you want to keep that clear. If you're using videos, you can revisit your notes from the YouTube session on Wednesday and think A, B, C, D, attract, brand, connect, and direct. Create different versions and different video lengths to give the system variety to work with. You can optimize your creatives using the campaign's asset reporting. It shows you KPIs like click-through rates and also performance indicators that tell you which assets you should replace. You should replace assets regularly, but also not too frequently because every change disrupts the algorithm a little and you want to minimize performance fluctuations. Cycle out assets that do not perform well, either when you see their KPIs decline or when their performance indicator shows as low. You only want to cycle out assets when you have used up all available slots. So you already have 20 images in your ad group, but you want to test additional ones. We recommend refreshing assets every two to three months and definitely not changing all assets at once because we want to keep things running smoothly and making big changes is never a good idea with campaigns that use automation and machine learning. If you want to test a completely new creative theme, we recommend doing that in a completely new ad group. You should use ad groups to structure your creative themes. For example, winter holiday destinations versus destinations for summer holidays. By doing that, you can actually improve campaign performance because the creative theme is now a new, additional, powerful optimization signal. You should also have at least one to two evergreen ad groups in your campaign, and each ad group should have full creative coverage with all asset types. You can use data feeds with your app campaigns to show users more product images. Using feeds also expands your campaign's eligibility to run on search because the data from your feed can be used to match your offering to users' search queries. And this concludes step three, creatives on app campaigns. We're now going to have a look at deep linking. As we saw earlier, today's consumers value convenience above everything else and will stick with brands that make it easy for them to take action. And because it is easier for the user to take action, campaigns that use deep links on average have a conversion rate that is twice as high as that of a campaign that links normally. Making it easier for the user also helps with performance. Campaigns that use deep links have a conversion rate that on average is twice as high as that of a normal campaign. In order to set up deep linking and capture its value, you should do three things. Firstly, you should enable deep links using app links on Android or universal links on iOS. Secondly, you report conversions through Google Analytics for Firebase and link it to your Google Ads accounts to see reporting. And thirdly, you use smart bidding to optimize for mobile app and web conversions. There's a tool called the Deep Link Validator in the App Advertising Hub in your Google Ads account that you can use to find out which deep links you have in your app and whether they connect seamlessly from web to app. In the App Advertising Hub, you can also find the Deep Link Impact Calculator. The Deep Link Impact Calculator tells you what might happen to your RI if you implement deep links so you can prioritize accordingly. That concludes the deep linking section of today's session. If you have any more questions, pop them into the chat. And we only have a few slides left, so hang in there. Let's now have a look at some universal app campaign implementation tips 
and best practices. Here's a timeline of the first 30 days of your universal app campaign and the key dates and actions to take. When you start your campaign on day zero, you set up conversion tracking, you prepare your campaign assets and you identify your goals and set up your bids accordingly, like we discussed earlier during this training. You then launch your campaign on day one and the learning phase starts. In the learning phase, you should make no or only really minimal campaign changes because it's the learning phase where the campaign itself will try different things to find the ideal targeting and the ideal creative combinations and you don't want to disrupt this learning. After seven days, the campaign goes from the learning into the assessment phase. So you can also make the first performance assessment and again, make small tweaks if necessary, but it's suggested to keep um, changes minimal still during this time so that the campaign can step stabilize. Then after seven further days, you can assess campaign performance again, make some more tweaks and also assess assets and coverage and plan for, for the first creative refresh. After a bit more than two weeks, the assessment phase has been completed and the campaign goes into optimization phase and you can make more changes. You should only make changes to the bids and the budgets in increments of less than 20% to not disrupt the campaign too much. And when you've made a change, you should also always wait until you have 100 conversions accumulated to reduce performance oscillations. Here's an example of how the KPIs in a universal app campaign evolved during the learning period and beyond. During the first 14 days, the campaign is testing out lots of different things to see what works. So performance is fluctuating and the conversion volume, the blue bars has not yet reached its full capacity. As the system is testing lots of different things, we've already heard it's best not to make any changes during the learning phase because that will disrupt the learning. As you can see in this illustration, performance and volume usually stabilize after the learning phase. When you evaluate your campaign performance, you should take the conversion lag into account. Your conversion lag is the time that occurs between the ad impression and the conversion that eventually occurs. On the day of the ad impression, the cost already appears in your account, but it might take a few days for all conversions to come in. So CPIs and CPAs will initially seem very high, but will actually go down over time. It's key to understand this timeline for your app because only when you do, can you evaluate your campaign performance properly. If you want to evaluate your campaign performance properly, you have to understand what the conversion lag looks like for your specific app. Generally, the smaller the conversion lag, the better for the app campaign. Ideally, we want 90% of conversions come in within seven days. If the conversion lag is much longer, our predictive models might have problems and we should potentially optimize for a different conversion. Ensure that your app campaigns are optimizing towards the same objectives as your web campaigns. For a holistic approach and evaluation, make sure that your universal app campaigns optimize towards the same business goals as your web campaigns. In order to get a comprehensive view of all your traffic, leverage both app and web properties in Google Analytics. In Google Analytics Property 4, you can see data across devices in all reports. If you enable user ID, you can also see customer journeys both on your mobile website and in your app. If you're using Google Analytics for web and for app, machine learning can help you build audiences across both your web and your app campaigns, which you can then leverage across devices. Once the machine learning model is trained, you can build new predictive audiences around the metrics in the audience builder. For example, you can create an audience of users who are likely to purchase in the next seven days or of users who have a chance of churning. Engaging the audience who is likely to churn will help you boost your DAUs because you're retaining users who are likely to lapse otherwise. This brings us to the end of today's session and also to the end of the Google Ads Fundamentals Bootcamps this week. As next steps, I'd recommend you head to the skill shop to take your Google Ads certification, the app certification based on today's training. And if you haven't taken the others, do that as well. To follow up on the content we covered today, go into your Google Ads account and set up an app campaign or any of the other campaign types we covered during the week to see how it works for yourself. If you have any questions on how to scale your campaigns or you want to learn more, reach out to your Google rep who will help you. Thank you for tuning into today's session and also all the other sessions of the Google Ads Fundamentals Bootcamp this week. 
Thanks for all your questions and your feedback so far. Please let us know what you thought about today's session when you get our feedback email later. I, at this stage, can only wish you all the best for your Google Ads certifications and for your further careers in digital marketing. Have a great weekend and bye.